What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys another video for Dinosaur Week. And in today's video we're doing a Dino Deck profile but not your typical Dino Deck profile. It's not the Scrap Dino build, it's not the OTK build. This is a Trap Dino build. Now if you guys are enjoying Dino Week, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. Again, we don't only just do Dino content here, we upload five days a week. This week is Dino Week so we're specializing on Dino, however we do product openings, deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff you'll catch it right here on the channel so make sure you guys subscribe now i will say trap dino is a build that i actually played a long time ago a few years back and it was just really really powerful and i wanted to modernize it for today's metagame so that's what we're going to be doing in today's video with that being said let's get right into the deck profile all right so i'm really excited to actually be bringing you guys trap dino i love this take of the deck it's a take that not a lot of people have back in the day this is actually what i played a lot i saw a lot of success with it so i wanted to modernize it for today Today's format. So let's get right into it. Here, of course, we are playing three Soul Eating Oviraptor. Of course, your best normal summon of the deck. We're playing two Ultimate Conducts Tyranno. Tyranno is very important in this build because he's really the only way you're going to be winning games. So for that reason, you have to be playing two. You don't want to brick on him by playing three. You guys can see we're playing a very low dino count. However, this card is insane, especially paired up with a couple cards in the main deck and the extra deck that I'm going to talk about in a little bit. So we're playing two Conduct to Tyranno, one Miscellaneousaurus. Of course, I wish we had three, but we only got one. Two Baby Ceratosaurus, as well as one Petit Tyranodon. You don't want to max out on the babies because you're not playing that big of an engine to begin with. So two baby as well as the one petite is perfectly fine. One petite is also really nice because there's a lot of combos where you end on Pankratops as one of your disruptions. So that's why you're playing the one petite. We're playing the one Archosaur. We're only playing the one because you're never really going to resolve this more than once. On top of that, you really don't want to see it. Again, this is a trap based deck. You really want to see your traps. You're not doing like full combo stuff. The play style of this deck is completely different. But trust me when I say this deck is low key, very spicy. And I'm going to be showing you guys some Spanko spice don't look at the side deck right now because i'm going to talk about that in a little bit but there's a lot of spice in this deck so we're playing the one archosaur we're playing the one pankratops pankratops of course really good going second but going first is a lot of combos where you can pop the petite and then summon the pankratops and then you have that as a disruption for you as well as the one giant rex this just becomes a big beater for you especially in the mid to late game and on top of that he helps you get into your extra deck then we're playing the two double evolution pill of course three fossil dig three lost world as well as the terraforming i don't think this needs much explanation this is very typical in dino lists you have to max out on your best cards and of course fossil dig is a not once per turn rota gotta max out on it lost world is really important specifically in this deck as well so that's why you want to be playing the lost world then for consistency we are playing three pot of prosperity prosperity is very important in this deck because you want to see the best traps in your deck as fast as possible so for that reason you want to be playing the prosperity you could in theory play extravagance if you guys don't have access to prosperity however all you would have to do is just change up your extra deck a little bit to suit extravagance a little bit better but for this build we're playing prosperity prosperity i think is just better overall however like i said you can still play extrav it's not like you can't play Strav, but the prosperity is just a lot more powerful i would say and then call by the grave of course we're playing one of this card's very important in today's format now this is what i want to talk about all the dino stuff i went pretty quickly because i don't think it needs much explanation the traps are pretty much how what is going to need more explanation right so first things first we're playing three trap trick of course this card is going to get you to your most important traps in the deck and it's going to help you win games so that's why you're playing the three and now i'm going to talk about the trap cards and why i picked these ones specifically so for the trap cards we're playing three ice dragons prison three different dimension ground as well as three of the brand new destructive daruma karma cannon this card came out in dark wing blast this card is insane with the deck and i'm going to explain it in just a little bit but why are we playing these traps first off we're playing ice dragon's prisons ice dragon prison is just really good into a lot of matchups the tier limit matchup it's really good into the sprite matchup it's really good into if they go into elf and you know they have a sprite monster in the graveyard you can banish both you're good to go so ice dragon's prison is very powerful this format then we're talking about ddg different dimension ground is one of the best trap cards i think in the game right now if you can resolve this tier won't be able to play sprite won't really be able to play sprite can still do things but they just don't really get anywhere through ddg and then on top of that a lot of rogue decks can't play through this so for that reason when you're taking account ddg as well as idp these two cards are really just blowout cards against a lot of decks if you resolve this your opponent is most likely not going to be playing much of their turn and then on the turn three when it comes back to you you really want to push for a lot of damage and then on your turn three is when you're going to be setting up a crazy board in terms of your extra deck monsters your monster disruption stuff like that so turn one essentially this deck is going to play through its traps 
turn three you're going to be playing through your monsters that's kind of how the deck plays out now we're going to be talking about the ruma cannon why is this card so good in this deck now i think this card overall is actually not that great if you're thinking about it in the conventional sense in the conventional deck however in dino it does have some really really cool synergy so this card overall is actually just not a bad card to begin with pendulum is on the rise and i think this card is also really good against those pendulum decks but it's also good against everything in general but what makes it so good in dino first of all it says you can change as many monsters on the field as possible to face face down defense position then if either player controls a face up monster they must send those monsters to the graveyard now why this is really cool is because it affects the player it doesn't affect the cards on top of that it sends link monsters to the graveyard on top of that when you are dealing with cards like arrival cybers those cards can't be unaffected can't be targeted etc etc however this affects the player which is really nice as well so it's really cool because it outs those big link monsters that you would otherwise not be able to out but on top of that the synergy is that it puts everything in defense position what monster can attack all monsters your opponent controls and send them to the graveyard and do piercing damage potentially depending on what you have from your extra deck also if you don't have the piercing damage you can put a thousand damage on your opponent just because you're sending a monster to the graveyard that is your conductor tyranno guys tyranno as well as the ruma cannon have so much good synergy with each other because you don't always have to use the tyranno effect to book of moon your opponent's monsters sometimes you can really just use the Daruma cannon you book of moon three or four of your opponent's monsters and then when it comes back to your turn you go conductor conductor can attack all monsters your opponent controls break their entire board and then you're doing a lot of damage as well especially if you have a pentastag on your side of the field which is going to help you do piercing damage so a lot of the time you can actually activate the ruma cannon and still be able to otk through the daruma cannon which is just insane so i think this deck has a lot of applications specifically in trap dino if you think about the meta decks in general or decks that are going to be popular in today's format not necessarily just tier or sprite which this card is pretty good into tier or sprite but not just those two decks right draco slayer is going to be a pretty decent deck you have a lot of decks that are still going to be popping up here and there and so for that reason this card i think is very powerful and it just synergizes so well with the dinos and then lastly we are playing three solemn strike solemn strike is just a really good trap card going first and going second which is why we're playing the three but i want to talk about solemn strike just a little bit solemn strike unlike the other traps is a counter trap so it's actually not searchable off of trap trick and i wanted to give you guys some really cool options or some really techie options all right so first of all i really like the solemn strike i think it's worth being in your main deck however another really cool option that you guys can play is two artifact sanctum as well as the one artifact site the reason you want to only play two sanctum is because you want to trap trick it most of the time and then you're going to get scythe on your side of the field and scythe of course is very powerful because it's going to lock your opponent out of the extra deck and again the best part about this is like i said earlier you're playing through your traps on your turn one and then when it comes back to you on your turn three you're going to be pushing for a lot of damage and scythe does help you do that it is 2200 attack points so it can still help you do some big damage so that's why i think the scythe package is another really good package you guys can play if you're not playing the solemn strike package and this is the spanko spice tech here honestly i'm just going to remove my face can real quick so you guys can actually just read this card right here so time space trap hole when your opponent special summons a monster or monsters from the extra deck or hand shuffle that monster into the deck and then you pay a thousand life points for each so the really cool thing about this is it shuffles cards that your opponent controls back into the deck it doesn't send them to the graveyard so a lot of those ones that have graveyard effects won't activate but on top of that it's a really cool card against pendulum hey you want a pens five all right i'll pay 5k and uh i'm shuffling everything back into your deck what are you gonna do from there you're gonna pass and i'm gonna be able to otk you now okay i'm gonna be honest with you time space is definitely not the best trap card however i will say it is the spanko spicy tech of the day i think this card is kind of funny i don't think it's actually that great solemn strike i think is the way to go but again if you're not going solemn strike i think you want to go artifact sanctum with the scythe play right so that's it for the main deck i wanted to give you guys some different options but i think the main deck is really really powerful then for the extra deck i don't think it needs much explaining we're playing two logia two dolka most of the time you're going to get rid of a logia with your prosperity anyways so that's why we're playing two and two playing one tornado dragon one dweller one dugaris dugaris does help you otk on your turn three like i said when it comes back to you you have the baguska which is another really cool option against some meta deck so that's why this card is really cool playing the one link karibo as well as the one secure gardener just in case you draw your archosaurus we're playing the one pentastag to help us otk you are playing the one underclock taker this card is kind of spicy in this deck you target a face up monster that this card points to and then you target one monster your opponent controls and then the monster your opponent controls is going to lose attack equal to the attack of the monster this points to so technically if you have conductor tyranno you can make one of your opponent's bigger monsters lose attack points equal to conductor's attack and then try to push for a lot of damage from there this is just another option for you and then we're playing the one nightmare phoenix the one nightmare unicorn as well as the axis code talker to try to push for game so the extra deck doesn't need too much explaining i don't think most of the time in the extra deck what you're going to be going into the most is your pentastag your axis code is a nice otk package and then your dolka really right and then these are just rank four toolbox that you can go into depending on the matchup you're up against but again at the end of the day prosperity is one of those cards that are really good in this deck because you can choose what you want to get rid of if you're playing extravagance i'm going to be honest with you the cards that you need 
need to play multiples of is like pentasteg you need to play multiples of this i would probably just cut the whole access code line if you're playing the extravagance i would play multiple link karibo multiple dolka multiple dweller multiple dugaris because these cards are really important to see in your deck because this is how you're going to be going for game and winning the game so for that reason you would have to change up your extra deck but again i think prosperity is the way to go if you guys can go with this route again if you guys can't it's totally fine you can go extravagance but i think this deck is really cool it's a different way to play the deck i think you guys should definitely try it out for yourselves because although it's a different play style i think this deck is really really fun and it catches a lot of people off guard so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that was my take on trap dino for the october 2022 format yes it's a tier limit based format it's a sprite based format and this deck essentially is built to beat those kind of decks because if you want to compete against the metagame then you have to build the deck to beat the metagame if that makes a lot of sense so if you guys did enjoy make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one like i said this week is dino week five days five dino videos however starting next week we're going back to our regular content we do five videos a week here on spanko deck profiles combo videos dual replays product openings all that good stuff right here on the channel so make sure you guys subscribe thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that spanko signing out peace